Hey, what up, dudes? Um, yeah, we're doing a breakdown. We haven't done a breakdown in so long. Um, outing in particular, aside from um, the first outing that I had uh, in Quebec, this was to this date probably the best outing. Now, there's a big thing that I want to point out, or there's two pieces to this that I want to point out. Okay, so one is obviously the score, right? Got three runs in the top of the inning. Us being the away team uh, had first at bat. So we score three runs, and I've talked about this on previous breakdowns, like the importance of a shutdown inning and controlling momentum. Extremely important, especially in the first inning, right? Um, so there's that piece. And then the second piece, as you'll see throughout this entire inning, is like I'm I'm kind of sh- I'm like shaky I'm not kind of shaky I'm, I'm shaky um, in terms of like my command like I just I don't really like I remember this outing very well and there was a lot of things in this first inning as you see throw me throw one freaking way up there that I was just like wow I don't have a feel for like fastball command I don't have a feel for like a secondary I think I spike you know a couple slider cutters in the dirt and it was just one of those things that you're gonna see throughout this entire first inning that sometimes that's the way it is, right? You get into a three, one count, throw a slider, try to find some sort of feel and you, you make a pitch, right? It's so interesting how like, obviously as a starter throughout the course of the game, there's so many pitches, there's so many opportunities, right? To execute and to not execute and whatever. And the best that are able to do it at the highest level are the ones that can can execute execute uh, in the biggest moments when it matters most, and um, I was really frustrated with that at bat, getting one two, and then going uh, too cute and walking them. But uh, this lineup here for Tri City is one of the the more like fearful lineups. Like they got some freaking boppers that can really hurt you. Um, and going into this game, obviously knowing that you're going to see. Uh, a lot of different looks. You're going to see a lot of different sequences, trying not to be too predictable, so on and so forth. Um, so execute one there. Oh, that was my boy Willie. Oh, yeah. I played with Willie in uh, the Pittsburgh organization. So that was fun, getting a little a little competition there with him. That was the first time I've ever faced him. But you can just see, like, even in this at bat, like, obviously release point, uh, command stuff's not there. I felt super bad. Um That's a tough play. Scores the first run uh, of the game with two outs there. And then um, what I was saying is I felt bad. That one ball I spiked in the dirt hit Kappa right in the ankle. So we're still in that mode of just like, gosh, get through this first inning, take a breather in the dugout, and then regroup, man. And um, fortunately enough, I get out of that first inning with with one run, and now let's let's lock in. Let's let's get a rhythm going. Establish some some sense of fastball command is like the most important thing. Uh, Facing my boy Chris here, um, good hair, spike a split, uh, still one, two. And then I believe that that was a curveball or a slider. That was a good sequence. Probably one of the better sequences of the game. I know this game in particular, I um, I actually get a lot of strikeouts. So I think as the as the the game progresses, you'll see that my cutter slider um, hybrid thing, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> gets uh, gets pretty good. That combination. So three two fastball, I think. Well, obviously, as we flip the lineup over and stuff, really good play there, Zach. Not a baby. We'll, we'll talk more about sequences and stuff, but I just wanted to kind of lay the groundwork for where I was at uh, with this particular kind of game, because it's, it's funny. Like, the game itself, like the outing itself, was probably like one of my best outings of the year in terms of like the stat line, but like you look at like my first inning and you're sitting there and I'm like, oh man, I don't even know if I'm going to get out of this first one. So it's so funny. Like that's why baseball I think is just like so beautiful because, you know, you could feel one way, hey, three, two curve. You can feel one way and your numbers could be a totally different thing. And that goes for both like negative and positive. Um, So really good sequence here that um, uh, let's go ahead and play this one again. All right. Oh, so we're going backwards there. I forgot. I forgot how to use this device. Weird. Where am I with this? Yeah, here we go. Here we go. We're back. All right, let's take a look at this sequence because I really like this sequence. All right, so lefty hands high. 
Can we do something here fancy that I've never really done before? Is that the strike zone? No? Is this the strike zone? No? Is this the strike zone? Okay, let's say that's the strike zone, huh? You guys good with that? Boom. Money. Oh, one. Okay. Good. One, one. Good. So, fastball, fastball, cutter, I think, maybe a slider. But that 0-1 pitch here allows for this engagement here. Why? Because with a lefty, dang, my strike zone went away. For me, with a lefty, like when you get when you get in here, right, glove side for righties, when you get in this, he's thinking, okay, if he's coming in on me and he has that ability to come in with me or come in on me like with a strike and a ball, then he has to initiate his swing somewhat earlier, right? Because he's got to get the head out. So now having that cutter, I can throw that. I don't even have to be like super perfect and neat with it. Like throw that started on that corner spot. You know, I can throw it somewhere in this vicinity and have it do just what it did. And with him being in a one, one count, you're going to get that engagement, right? So then boom, you get that engagement one, two, and then we're going to do the same thing, but we're just going to take speed off. So then we throw the slider, you know, I mean, technically I missed my spot, right? Cause it goes boom right in the middle, but that's the, that's the beauty of like sequencing in such a way that, uh, promotes, you know, the ability to, to miss your spot but have a good result, okay? So now you can see that I'm starting to catch a rhythm here. Um, O2, good pitch. I, I, I mean, I don't hate that. And then the little curveball piece upstairs. And I mean, where are we at with that strike zone, right? I would have to adjust that strike zone for this guy. <laughs> are we there? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and count it. A little curveball piece at the top of the zone. Tough pitch, man. That's frustrating. This is where I think like, you know, to give you guys like a deep dive, this is where I think I've grown as a pitcher, like in maturity, because like everyone here, I think kind of has a sense of like, okay, now he's found it. He's cruising a little bit. And then this, oh, oh, cut fastball, like hits the guy in the foot who's crowding the dish and like the plates right here and it hits right here, and that's like a frustrating thing. You're cruising, now you got a guy on base. I think younger me would, would kind of dwell on that, right? Have that in the back of your mind, like, gosh, that's frustrating, whatever, but here we go. Turn the page, Willie, my boy, make a pitch, make another pitch. Now we're just, <laughs> I'm just giving them heaters. And then we throw the cutter, um, gets a little, bro I think that was his broken bat, or was the first one his broken bat. But we make a pitch, and he's just a really good hitter and uh, finds a way to put it in play in the hole. Now we're second and third, right? So now we, we gotta buckle down because a base hit ties this game. And it's a good hitter, and we do just that, all right? So that's that's big, damage control, guys. I mean, shoot, if you're watching this and you're wanting like pitching tips and or understanding of what makes a pitcher, you know, reliable to the manager, damage control. Things don't get, things never really get too bad. Right. Obviously, you're going to find yourself in jams and you're going to find yourself grinding, you know, because you're not going to have your best stuff. Everyone kind of knows that. But if you have the ability to damage control, like I said, kind of in the beginning, you know, making that one pitch when it really matters, guys on second and third, tying run on second, bopper at the plate, and you execute that pitch and you get that three unassisted. And it's like those little intangibles right there matter. So start him off. This guy got me twice this year, and uh, you'll see it in another breakdown in a in a in a future outing. Dude rakes, all right. So I start him off, and I don't mean to do this, but throw one little chin chin music, okay? Heater, and this is where I was frustrated because like the first thing that I think of is like, okay, well I did that, and I got him, you know, maybe backed off of what whatever. Now I can start that slider at his hip, and I can get back into account, and that was kind of the thought. And then I was just like, no, let's throw just another fastball. Let's get on this fastball and boom. So he takes this pitch yard, right? And that's why baseball is so freaking great. And by great, I mean it sucks sometimes. <laughs> 
because you're throwing this Johnny here. I know the video quality is a little poor, but you know, and we can make the conversation for like, oh, well, some guys are just looking for the ball uh, middle in or not even in, but just they're looking for it in and depending on like where they stand and whatever they want to get their hands extended. But like, shoot, man, I mean, pulls his hands in and finds a barrel and hits a homer. Some guys are good. And that might be on me that I need to kind of identify something in his swing that says very loudly to me, like, hey, don't throw that heater there. But who knows? He gets me again later in the year, as I mentioned, and it wasn't on a, a, a heater in. Now my boy Chris, good hair, and we're going to get him to ground out. Good, solid fastball executed down in the zone. And that's another thing, right? Like I like to kind of bring this point up because we can talk all the live long day about proper sequencing and like, you know, showing hard in, soft away, and, and you know, multiple pitches for strikes. But like there is a point in time when like at the end of the day, right? So a 2-1 count, it's a hitter's count. At the end of the day, the fastball like on top downhill and you know down in the zone that's enough right and this is something that i still struggle and historically struggled with is like that giving hitters too much credit being too fine and trying to think that i had i have to make that freaking perfect pitch every single pitch which promotes this little restriction of me i like i acknowledge that but sometimes man like you know, a good fastball. There's a, there's a good swing. A good fastball uh, does the job. I like this guy as a hitter, though, man. Like, no BGs freaking up there taking rips. Like, respect. And we go 2-2 two, two slider for the K-Burger. So, bottom four. Now we got a one-run lead. Hey, curveball decided to show up outside and fastball up. I threw a fastball up. That's, that's a big move for me. <laughs> and then a slider. I was really, really banking on a, on, a, on a K there. But we'll get out of the fourth. All right. 3 2. A little open side mechanical view. I wish the video quality was better. So now we're uh, bottom five. Score still the same. Start him off. High slider. I want that call, guys. I want the call. I want the call. Where's the ball? Am I getting that? I guess not. No, you're right. You're right. Might be. Stop making it look so good, Phil. Okay, two zero. Now this is the this is that same kind of thing we're talking about the 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 this idea with with starting pitchers especially 2-0 one run game you start sensing that like uh internal pressure of man like now i gotta really consciously think about executing or like make it make it better or all these things right but there's something to be said oh especially now right 3-0 this might be one of those things right okay so good Four pitch walk, and this is something that as as I've gotten older that you grow with, and it's hard to do, right? So five balls in a row. It's hard to do because everyone kind of says this as if it's easy, like turn the page, right? There's next pitch. Oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Not care, and the really good ones have this understanding of their abilities on the mound okay so six balls in a row and they are continuously convicted that they're too good to care about four balls five balls six balls in a row because they are convicted in their ability to then throw that next one in the zone and this is something that I've gotten better with as I've gotten older and I've trusted my preparation being in the moment like I've always worked hard but being in the moment and taking a step back and breathing and just being like, dude, I work too hard to like stress about this freaking little jam here. Like, let's go. Right. You're, you're, you're one executed pitch away. Always look at it like half full. Cause it's very easy to be out there in a jam and be like, Whoa, this sucks, dude. Like what if I give up a Homer here? And then that's like the lead, right? You obviously got a bopper at the dish, constant positive affirmations, but be in reality, trust your preparation and be prepared while you're in the moment. 
So um, we start them 2 0. We threw six balls in a row, and then we come back with two executed heaters, and we get the 2 2 pop up to center. And now, let's, now we're on. We're back up. All right. So now two cutters in a row inside, throw the fastball up in the zone. I just did a, what am I doing here with this? I get fired up and I kind of black out sometimes, but I get the double play. And right before I talked to Zach, or I didn't talk to Zach, I looked at Zach. I was like, be ready. We're going to get you one. And I do this little hop, right? A little ha. And we, can we talk about the heel click? We got a heel click in there. Watch this. Boom. There it is. You guys heel click. Now, unfortunately the heel click mid play isn't guaranteed to increase the efficiency of one's double play, but it was worth a shot. All right. So bottom five, now we're two outs. Oh, one. Then we go slider. Oh, two, another slider. That's a really good take. Got him leaning. And then we go another slider. This is always the, like, there's always this fine line, right? Because we throw this one, two, or sorry, we throw this Oh, two, and we throw this slider away and down. Okay, so good O2 pitch. We get him leaning. All other the other two pitches in this at bat were very somewhat similar to this kind of like pitch going away from a righty and going down in the zone. Somewhat similar, okay? Cutter slider. Um now one two, you could be like, oh well the the pitch to the pitch to go with here would be like a, a heater in this area. You guys saw it in the in the playoff game. Dodgers Giants game five NLDS where Urias would go like up here and he would he was getting that call and it's like how do you hit that but then there's this understanding of like all right well I feel good in this moment right as a pitcher like I feel in this moment really good with that slider down and away so I can execute another one like that O2 he took it tip your hat is he can he do it again and then you throw it, maybe another sharper one. But it's not that mentality that's, I have to do it there, right? Like, that's me being free and convicted. Like, there's a lot of times I'll get O2, and, and I hate to say it publicly, but there's sometimes I get O2, and I'll be like, man, I really got to execute. Like, I can't give them an O2 hit, right? And you face that little restriction there, and that's no bueno. So now we get out of the fifth, and the score's still tied, so doing a good job holding that lead. Um, o O. I believe that was a cutter. Oh, one. Now we go slider. Here's the sequence. I talked about this on a, on a lot of other breakdowns. The cutter slider. And now I want to go fastball up and we go fastball right down the shooter. So again, it's one of those things. You can get away with things if A, your stuff is just insane. And B, you, you sequence in such a way that the hitter maybe gets in his head and you know we're there this is an unreal at bat this is a homeboy that took me deep so i'm going 2-0 we're going away then we show him something in and then now we're 2-1 we actually throw that fastball a little middle away now we're 2-2 knowing you know that's that good slider knowing what he did that previous at bat i'm trying to take that into consideration with maybe things on the inner third he's 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 quick to it and uh, I shake to this pitch the three-two slider that I got Willie out on that that previous inning. You know, that's I, I come off the field and I'm just kind of you know saying like, hey, that's a great take. He had a great he had a great day at the dish, right? It's a professional hitter, um, and you know he has that ability to to hold and and shoot draws the walk. And that's that's the the last at bat that I. Uh, of the, of, the, of the outing for me. I get pulled. Higher, higher pitch count, like a lot of 3-2 counts, right? Especially early. Um, I think I finished with like 7 or 8 Ks. But uh, I was good with that outing. That was good. Did, you know, we ended up winning the game. Held the lead. It's fantastic. Capra behind the dish. Sensational job. There's a, I, I mentioned this in the beginning. There's a lot to take away from that. Um, positive outing. There was a lot of opportunities for that outing to go really, really bad. And it didn't. It was damage control, being convicted in the moment while things may be starting to kind of slip off the rails a little bit. It's hard to do, but the question is, all right, well then how do we how do we do it as pitchers, right? Like how do we still be confident and convicted in the moment of which things are going bad? For me, that's like trusting that preparation. And even like your preparation needs to be somewhat tailored to, okay, well, I'm putting myself in a situation in which I am struggling 
and I see myself like I, 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 I see myself get out of this in a practice setting. And then the more that you do that, the better that you get at it. And then the more convicted that you can get mentally while you're in those situations. Right. Cause a lot of people, they, we obviously seek comfort and especially like in bullpens, we seek that comfort of, okay, it's, you know, I'm going to throw a, a simulated hitter to work on my pitches, but no one's on, no one's out. There's no score. You know, maybe if you think about switching that up and being like, all right, it's second and third, no outs, three, four, five coming up, you know, now we're in that game like, and so your mind is constantly freaking absorbing all this stuff, right? So then it can slowly process all of this stimulus and be like, oh, we're comfortable in this moment. Instead of like that whole analogy of like, well, you didn't prepare for a test and you go into that test and you're nervous and you're anxious and all these things. It's the same thing. Like when you get into these jams or you get into these, these moments in a game and you throw six straight balls, you throw seven straight balls and it's like, there's a lot of pressure. That strike zone looks super small, right? Put it into practice, dude. Um, so you can train your body and your mental to, to be okay with, with, when you're in those moments, obviously we want to avoid those moments, but it's baseball. They're going to happen. So that, uh, that'll conclude this breakdown. Um, as for me, the date currently is October 15th. I'll be leaving, leaving for winter ball here in a, a couple weeks and, uh, content right now is on fire because we got, we're doing live ABs like two to three times a week. Um, mic'd up, obviously it'd be encourage you guys to check those out. Um, I'm having my editor make like movies out of it. So it's coming out really dope. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was fun to hop back on here and do a breakdown with you guys. Much love. God bless. Till next time I'm out. See ya.